listen to the iPods. I haven't seen a 15 year old with a boombox in a long time. Skaters, 
in a lot of ways. I've never skateboarded in my life. Um, yeah, we do have a couple skateboarders here. Okay. <laughs> We're older skaters too. Not to make us anymore. Um, <laughs> also, I just want to say that I'm sorry, but I think it's very important that people be able to say what they feel without having to edit it and to worry about what they're saying. And I really haven't heard anything that sounds, you know, that really sounds defensive or, and I feel that it really is important that people be able to say what they want to say. And I really feel grateful when people are coming forward and speaking. So I, yeah, I mean, um, so my name is Brian Kraske, I live at 15 Union Street, and I just want to kind of join my neighbors in saying, you know, I love the idea of a skate park in the Rattleboro in general. Um, and I really want to applaud the committee for taking this opportunity to engage the community. And uh, I have to apologize in advance uh, just because I want to try to help you engage your community more fruitfully in the future by expressing how frustrating it's been over the last year to try to constructively uh, engage you in the design of the skate park as proposed so far. Um, so I, I can just kind of relate what it's been like trying to engage in this issue. I hope that everyone can learn something from it and maybe uh, we can have like, a more productive working relationship going forward. Um, I, I mean, I guess it, it kind of started uh, December 4th of last year. I read in the reformer that there was going to be a skate park built literally across the street from my house, and that was the first I'd heard of it. So instantly, the fact that, you know, I'm reading about it in the paper, that there's going to be something that affects me that much, and no one involved with the project had talked to me, knowing full well that I would be concerned, you know, in advance, uh, put me on the defensive. It was a little awkward. But, you know, I, I did some research into skate parks in general, and uh, I had, you know, a, sort of a great respect for the positive influence a skate park can have in a community, and numerous concerns for the specifics of the plan for the skate park at the Trouble Lot. Um, this was before the school board approved the lease of the land, so I talked to the school board about my concerns, and was basically told they heard me, but there was really nothing they could do about it. Their concern was the, edu the impact on education of the kids here at the school, and that my concerns would have to be directed to the Development Review Board, which is understandable, but the DRB doesn't get involved until the end of the process here, and I really wanted to have my voice heard before that. Uh, so I tried to you know, engage you know, early on directly with the state board you know, committee. I uh, emailed and talked on the phone with David Longsmith. Um, David provided some very useful information about uh, skate parks in Portland, Oregon, which has you know, a lot of skate parks, a great reputation among skaters for supporting the skate community. And um, uh, it was great information about the impact on the community that skate parks can have. Uh, the other thing Portland, Oregon is well known for is uh, noise control ordinances. And you know, looking into the data from there uh, development review, review board, you know, measuring the, you know, loudness, you know, the decibel readings you would get, uh, the perceived noise impact from a skate park, and, you know, reading up on how Portland uh, zones skate parks and what their uh, noise regulations are for zoning. I, you know, emailed David back saying, you know, hey, uh, according to this information you've given me about Portland, uh, your skate park is way too loud to be right next to my house. You know, you're going to be creating an impact noise. I don't have the data on me, so I'm not going to make up numbers right now. Um, but the, the noise that um, Portland measures from the skate parks that are as close to, uh, at, at the distance that my house is from the skate park, is above what would be legal, you know, according to their same zoning regulations. So I said, you know, are you guys going to think about revising the designs, the preliminary designs I've seen posted on Facebook, and this was a year ago. And David said, yeah, those are just preliminary. Don't use those to judge the impact of the noise on your house. You know, come talk to us, engage with us. 
Um, but this is the this is our last stand for location. We've been trying to do this for years, and the crawl up where it's got to be. Um, so I thought, okay, just preliminary. I'll you know, come to the skate park in the committee meeting. Um, this was December of last year, um, and uh, you know, talked with uh, various people there about you know. I brought up my concerns about noise. Um, <coughs> and uh, Adam Hubbard, who did the drawings for the uh, preliminary design here, uh, at this meeting he said, uh, I asked, you know, we could be putting up, I, I didn't see any walls, you know, any kind of like physical structures for noise abatement. Um, is that planned and just not pictured? And Adam said, oh no, absolutely not. You know, we don't want to put walls up, those are ugly, that would reduce support from the community. Uh, we will do embankments you know, much more attractive, will deflect the noise up and away from neighboring houses. Um, I talked to David after the meeting, though, and David said, we don't want to do embankments because that reduces the possibility for supervision. We want the skate park to be visible from the street because we're not going to have dedicated supervision there. So we want it to be a very visible space. So we won't do embankments. So, uh, you know, uh, almost a year later, I see new revised preliminary plans posted online on Facebook, on your website. Um, so this is long after I've raised my initial concerns about noise and talked about how, you know, this is gonna be too loud to be next to my house. And got all these responses saying, it's preliminary, we're working on it, don't take any of this, you know, seriously. Uh, I see new plans, much more detailed, clearly more work went into them, and still, there's nothing in this new diagram showing how there would be any kind of noise control for the, you know, preventing, you know, from being too loud for neighboring residences. I see no embankments, no structures. So it's kind of uh, frustrating to keep raising these concerns and, you know, not have them be either, not have them be answered at all. Sounds like, you know, not being even heard. Um, and, I mean, even a couple weeks ago on Facebook, John Webster posted on your wall a question. You're John Webster? Yes. Thanks, John. Um, you posted basically saying, you know, hey, how late does everyone want to keep this open? You know, I don't think we could do all night. Or maybe we can do until midnight. Now I hear tonight from David that, you know, there's not going to be any lighting there. It's going to be shut down after dark. But no one jumped on the Facebook page at that time two weeks ago to say it's not going to be lit. There won't be any skating after dark. So I think. I applaud you for trying to engage with the community today, and I hope that going forward it can be more positive than it has been in the past. I hope that the questions and concerns people have raised here tonight aren't answered with the same kind of deafness that I've kind of felt in you know, trying to raise what I thought was one simple concern about noise. I ignored a whole host of, host of issues just to focus on one thing that I thought I could maybe get an easy concrete answer to, and we're here a year later. I don't see any progress made on it. So I, I mean, I'd love to hear the progress has been made. I don't want to sound confrontational. I want to kind of echo Allison's apology about, you know, I don't mean it to sound as frustrated as, you know, perhaps these words do, but, you know, I just want to try to convey what the process has felt like and what the lack of progress has felt like from this kind of side. Thanks. I am Brendan Clark, the part of asking me to say initially about. Just a couple of things about the rest of the world. Public projects are really hard because it's always hard to figure out when you're going to, when do you let people know about things and what do you know about things. And we, realistically, we've got a project that's probably not going to hit the ground for, if we have this next year, I'll be surprised because you got a lot of fundraising to do, you got the permitting to do. Uh, I hope we, I mean, I hope there's something, but I, I'm gonna be surprised. It's December, or it's November. It feels like December. <laughs> you can buy me Christmas candy. Um, the public, public projects are hard because you gotta put something out there for people to buy into, or people to see, or people to get feedback on, and when you don't have anything, we don't have anything right now. We have a piece of property that we think might work. And, and so 
I can I, I, I understand your frustration because you know it's this thing's going to happen right now. It's across my it's it's across from my house. I want to know. I've got a lot of questions and I'm not getting any answers. And so I, I understand your frustration. And it's frustrating to have being asked questions and not have a lot of answers. A um, couple things too. We have a learning process too with people with um, with, the, with the town process as well. Um, you know, you get a new group, or you get a new committee together, they have a lot of um, energy, and I think that every time they meet with me, I manage to whack them down a little bit and take some of their energy away and suck it right out of them. Um, but, I mean, that's what it feels like to me sometimes, because it's like, okay, guys, you got to keep making sure we're doing this. We need to make sure that we're having our meetings. We need to make sure we don't get too far ahead of ourselves. Um, but at the same time, you know, this is citizen participation. <laughs> This is a citizen group. This is what we want. This is the energy that we want. Um, and so there is, it's a real balancing act sometimes um, with this. So a couple things. One is this, this hasn't been approved by anybody. Um, you know, I can tell you what I think about it, but who cares? <laughs> you know, um, it's not been approved by anybody. And again, one of the reasons I always go back to, what's the real process here? Because the process here is we've got a lot of people who are going to have a lot of input as we keep going on. You need to stay engaged. I mean, I've leaned over to Carol a lot, and I said, he needs to be on the committee. Because that's how you're going to really find things out, and that's how you're really going to um, um, stay involved. Um, I think we, need, we, being the town now, have work that needs to be done because Noise can, is an issue. It's going to come up every time we, we meet with the public, and we need to start getting some better answers. But again, remember, we don't even have any money. We, we have $1,000, maybe? Something like that. I'm hard to go. Almost $5,000. $5,000? So we've got, we've got not even quite enough yet to, to hire somebody to help us figure out some of those noise studies. Because we do, and that's the stuff we're going to need to know. That is all stuff we're going to need to know. And we need to hear all the negative. We need to hear the positive. We need to, we need to hear all of that because that's what being a community and that's what a community project, community projects are, 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 are messy. Um, and that's what we're going to end up, we're going to hear these same things a lot. You can't get tired of saying the same thing because you're going to have to say it more than once. And you're going to have to say it over and over. And we're going to have to respond to it. And every time we go further along in the project, we're going to have to back up and we're going to have to say, oops, what about this? Um, and so there are issues, there are things we need to you know, we can, we need to figure out. One of the things that this doesn't show is, you know, our insurance requires us to have a fence. So I look at that and I'm like, ooh, it's a fence. <laughs> you know, um, so there are a lot of things that, you know, as the project goes along, factors that are going to get, um, continue to get um, um, voice and that are going to have to be dealt with. And, um, and so we, I encourage you to continue to keep coming to the meetings and keep giving us, us um, all the feedback that you can. Um, because this is, and be prepared. This is going to be a longer project, um, you know, and it's going to change as it goes along. Just I want to touch real briefly on a couple of things. West River Park. West River Park, you guys going to have a skateboard park there. And you're just not going to have a skateboard park there because the local development review board is not going to let you. And more importantly, the state is never, you're never going to get an Act 250 passed with a skateboard park in that area. Um, you are, you and, and it's because of the water. And it's because of the water. How are you going to build anything there? It's because, and that's why we are restricted with what we can build there. Um, that's why we're restricted with what we can build they have there. Rooms? And I can show you, plane? they have they have restrooms that are being in special design. They were, we're looking at the composting um, restrooms. There are a lot of things we have to do with, with the Act 250 to get to with that area. Um, the other thing with that project, um, and again, the history of the project is, because this started along several years back, the goal when that committee, when that citizen committee started looking for sites where they landed on the West River Park site, was they were looking for ball field space. They found the West River site and they said, how about a dog park? How about a community garden? How about a skateboard park? Because we've got all this space. 
and we went to development review and we went to Act 250 and we lost the dog park. We lost the, because of some of the wildlife there. We lost um, in some of the wetlands that are there. We lost the um, community garden for the same reason and we lost the skateboard park. Um, and so what you're gonna end up with there is field space. Um, and so, so that's just it. One of the things, I'm gonna point this out right now because I just realized it. Um, the best way for us to get information out to the public is, is really through the newspaper and through the media. So we have VCTV here, and you're gonna note that the, the newspaper guy left. So he's gonna tomorrow, the reformer, <laughs> he's gonna say, they asked why not West, West River Park. And so I'm gonna have to call him and say, this is why not. Um, but that's, that's a frustration that we have too, is how do you always get this information out? We're gonna, to, I, I, I'm, gonna be, I'm gonna be talking about why we can't do West River Park for the next year. Um, because that's just, that is the reality. We're never gonna get it through um, Act 50. Um, Union Station, that project, <laughs> and contrary to what was said, there is work done. The garage is now demoed, thank you. Um, that project has, that is a horrible, horrible, horrible project <laughs> we've been working on. We have, uh, we have run into, first of all, it's highly contaminated with ground fields because of the gas works and it has um, gas tar in the ground, um, which is one of the worst ground fields. I'm sure you know it's one of the worst um, things that you can have. It may be possible to do some type of skateboard park there. The issue is when they showed those, when they showed the plans down in the, um, the museum, but in the 10 bucks, they never showed that, that that old train station that sits right in the middle of a wooden building. That building is uh, hit state is historic on the state register, and to get it down is going to take a, will take a lot. Because the state's already, state historic preservation has already come down, looked at it, and said, nope, this one should, this needs to stay. So that kind of cuts that, that project in half. Um, and, um, and that's been a real issue for us as well. Um, not to say we can't keep looking at things like that, but it's gonna be a real different project. Uh, it's gonna be a real different skateboard park that you would have down there, because um, of size. Um, but, um, so those are just a couple of things. And again, I really appreciate, you're gonna have to keep talking to us about noise. You're gonna have to keep talking to us. There are alternatives, you're right. There's the Elm Street lot. People will always say there's the Elm Street lot as well. Um, you know, my, uh, you know, the issue with that is it's really a high, that's a valuable piece of property in the downtown area. Um, it's also right next to a, um, uh, the Sarsosimos on one side of the semis and now we also have the um, um, cultural intrigue moved on the other side with, with semis coming in, so I'm not sure. Can I ask you how many people you're, how many boarders you expect to have arriving every day? Sure. Any idea of it? How many ha what? How many boarders you expect to come every day? I won't be there. I'm <laughs> <laughs> scared <to> again. <laughs> I, I don't want to prevent anyone from making further comments. I do want to thank you for raising issues like parking and traffic and, and like the noise. Party I'm really concerned and, about. And, 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 and I want to apologize, Brandon. I mean, we have been in touch for a year now, practically, about this. I have to say, when the reformer article that came out that the school board had voted to approve the concept of leasing the land, it was, it was, it was just that, um, that minimal at the time, I was about as surprised as you were. I mean, we had been following it for a little bit because we were we had been made aware that the school board was considering it. Um, but it was, it was a bit of a surprise for us to, because of the time it took for it to come out. And I apologize that we haven't been able to show you a co coherent noise abatement program. Um, you know, from the moment we met, and from the moment we got together, we were talking about this kind of rail and that kind of jump and this kind of area. And that is two years out from then. And, um, you know, having a design like that, having the stuff you saw on Facebook, you know, it's a double-edged sword. This is what it could look like, get excited. It's going to look like that. Oh my God! You know, I mean, it it, it, it serves a, it, it serves a purpose on some levels of not really pr presenting accurate information to you. Um, next time we next time we share you a design with you, it's going to have some. Okay, it's going to have some element in there to indicate that we're that we're incorporating that. 
because it's obviously very important that, that we're not disturbing the neighborhood. And, you know, and if we're not proactive about designing it, so that we'll get all the way to the develop, development review board and they'll say it's too loud. We prefer not to get to that point to find out that. So, like Barb said, keep raising it, please. Yes, sir. Yeah. I, I just want to comment finally, if I may, that uh, a basic, uh, ask, asking the basic board the consideration if, in fact, West River became available, would they go there or are they so deep into the coal lot that they will not consider anything else? And that's, a, that's an issue. Because I must respond to the issue of the stormwater. It's, it's a bit personal. Uh, I did not make uh, up my statement. I consulted higher authority. Uh, my daughter, who is incidentally a University of Vermont graduate, is a hydrologist. Her specialty is stormwater disposal. When I told her about this, and uh, she's quite familiar with the lot, we have a house in Townsend, and she goes up there all the time and goes past that lot. Her reaction was a bit stronger than mine, as, but she said, in effect, nonsense. We can design for it. This is a matter of design. People uh, do that all the time. So this stormwater thing is uh, uh, not my idea. I have consulted uh, that, uh, uh, that authority. She also talked with uh, building a, a skateboard park out of pervious concrete. Uh, the uh, National uh, Concrete Association uh, Nixed that, the technical person saying pervious concrete is too sharp and uh, would cause some rather difficult uh, abrasions on the skateboard as it has to be smooth. But he also commented there's no reason why it can't be designed to divert the rainwater uh, to a location where it can be disposed of properly on the site and that that's not a problem. So we have engineers that I've consulted who have said, yes, this is entirely possible. For the record, I agree with you 100% that my, in my mind, something can happen there. Let's see if we can find some more information that, that could change things. I, I, I wouldn't say that, that we're, I mean, we are, we, are, we, are, we are taking this opportunity that the school board and the, that, that, the, that the town has provided to us with this lot. I mean, if you think about going back 30 years of trying to find a place, when someone finally offers you a place, there may be some issues with it but we finally have a location after 30 years to, to actually start building it. I think if another place is better, like Elm Street or something, you know, how about the, how about the Harmony Lot, Barb? I think that would make a great, anyway, um, you know, I think we're open, I think we're open to that. I think there could be areas that are even more central to, to, to teenagers and to, and to um, you know, to a place that, that may not be, um, have any issues of noise. Those aren't here right now. Um, if we can uncover them, then I, I believe that we would be open-minded about it. It'd be nice to have restrooms. Yes. <laughs> for parking. For basketball players and toddlers, too, yeah. Yeah, Carol. If I just may respond to the uh, West River Park site, you know, there, what, as Barb alluded to earlier and when she was speaking, you know, one of the main crutches for that site was you know, with the loss of the full flex site, was we needed additional ball field space, we needed additional practice space, we needed additional game space because of the loss of that site. So in the location, could could a, a skate park fit down there? Right in the middle of a 300-foot softball field? Yeah, it could, but that would be at risk of what that whole project would be all about. And where we were try, trying to fit in the, the, the number one needs for that site was ball fields, multi-purpose field, multi-purpose practice fields, and then, you know, to, to be able to fit in the skate park, where we could fit the skate park in, okay. that's, that's what doesn't fit into the state regulations. And that's why we're unable to get our um, permit from the state of Vermont, of Vermont to be able to put a skate park in there, as well as the local DRB. Awesome. I just want to say one thing. I'm really excited because everything I've heard about state skate parks, I've only lived here seven years, but everything I've heard was not as much about where, but about what we were doing and who wanted it. You know, so the kids and uh, slant on that. And I'm not hearing any of that here, which is just very joyous for me. <laughs> um, because the youth that we talk to and we work with for the most part, and we work with about 2,000 a year at youth services across Wimmington County, 
they are really just wanting a voice and then wanting adults to help them. They've asked us and said, we really want adults in our lives and we really want you to support what we, what we need and what we want and what we think we would like to have. And if they were here in numbers, um, thank you for coming. Young man. Um, I just wanted to, if they were here in numbers, I think that they would be relieved and feel supported by the kindness of all of you who really want to see this happen. And so on their behalf, since they're not all here, I just want to thank you and say that it seems like everybody's in the same place and wanting one and we just need to figure out how and where this thing can go so that these youth, after all these years, could actually have this and hear from you by actually having a physical artifact that their community really cares about them and is listening very nicely to them. So thank you. I just want to touch base about the youth participation a little bit. Um, I do have two sons, one's a 14 year old and the other is 16. The 14 year old periodically comes to meetings. Uh, the 16 year old is really involved. Um, we're close to a year now and we've been having meetings just about every other week we're close to two hours, so we're well over 300 hours of meetings now. And to get them to participate week after week in, in what we're doing, it's difficult, um, but they come. Um, but trying to actually sell that concept to their friends and say, hey, come and join us at a two hour meeting during you know, the school week, it's difficult. Um, and we do have people coming and going, but um, you know, there, there's kids out there that, uh, want to help, if uh, you remember the parade, it's the social aspects that you'll see the energy. The parade was well involved, we probably had <coughs> 35 participants, and then uh, the uh, uh, gallery walks is also a good time to see you know, the youth helping us out, but they are there, it's just difficult during the meeting.